Wednesday's great Aunt Calpurnia. She was burned as a witch in 1706. They said she danced naked in the town square and enslaved a minister. But don't worry, we've told Wednesday. College first. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I'm actually continuing on with my makeup costuming Halloween series that I did last year. Although I had much more time to do a full five videos last year, this time around, I'm working full time, I'm busy all the time, so I decided that if I could do any of them, I would do one. And so I'm so happy to be able to actually get this done for you guys. And today, we're doing a makeup tutorial on Morticia Adams. So because Morticia has had so many different looks across the years, I went ahead and based this one mostly off the 1990s Adams Family movies starring Raul Julia, Angelica Houston, and Christina Ricci. Now these, in my mind, are classic and they stick out as the quintessential Morticia look. Although I'm not completely replicating Angelica Houston's face, this tutorial will let you know how to get that smoky eye and chiseled cheekbone that Morticia has so iconically. So if you want to know how I accomplished this makeup look, just keep on watching. I'm starting out with my face already primed and with a layer of foundation applied. What I'm using is Tarte's Rainforest of the Sea foundation mixed with L'Oreal Pro Glow. And now since we're doing a glam Morticia look, I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes with the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Primer. This step will ensure that the colors really pop on your face and that it stays put for hours. So the day before yesterday, which also happened to be my birthday, I dressed up as Morticia at a witch's ball event. And what I did was sort of a natural glam version of Morticia, but for this one I'm going for the tried and true classic Morticia look from the 1990s movies. So because she has a very light color up here near the eyebrows, I'm going to go ahead and mix the color Fresh from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette with a white shade that I already have also from Anastasia's Riviera palette. I'm not picturing that because I don't think it should be necessary for you to have to use two palettes, but if you happen to have a white shade or a shade that is a shade or two lighter than your own skin color, that would be good to use right up here at the brow bone to highlight. So I'm gonna go forward with more concealer later to really highlight the face, but before I get too deep into the eyeshadow, I do want to just conceal my under eyes just a little. I haven't done that quite yet. So you can take this time to either spot treat any blemishes or anything you wanna cover up, or just cover the under eye area the way I'm doing. Now, because, you know, everybody has fine lines, I don't do a whole lot of concealer under the eye because it really does emphasize that and to me that's on myself that's really the most annoying thing so I just go ahead and I put a dot right underneath the eye I find that especially the older that you get less is more Now also to ensure that we don't get a lot of eyeshadow fallout, I'm going to put some powder right on my cheekbone to where it normally falls out. For this step, I'm using the MAC and Patrick Star powder. Now we're gonna get into the fun part. My transition shade is going to be Slate, which is the gray tone from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette. I'm gonna start by putting it in my transition area, but really I am going to put it all over the base of my eyelid to use as a base to put my shinier silver on top of later. And keep in mind, I'm keeping this base gray layer light so that we can build on that later. For this step, I'm using a fluffy blending brush, which is the Sigma E40. So we just put on a lot of gray, so in order to ensure that all of that is blended correctly, I'm gonna go back into that light white shade and then go right back into the brow bone just to make sure that it's blended seamlessly. And you can keep building up with that gray and blending as you see fit. So I'm excited because we're starting to look a little spooky. Because I put powder on my cheekbone and up into the under eye, I'm going to dust off the area immediately underneath my eye so that I can start applying some powder there. Now that that's done, I'm going to add that same gray shade called Slate right underneath the eye. And I'm going to make sure to leave the inner corner open so that we can add some highlight there later. For this, I'm using a slightly smaller fluffy blending brush. This one is the Morphe M506. And I'll blend using the slightly larger fluffy brush, the Sigma E40. 
For my eyes, I'm just wearing clear contacts. For Morticia, I looked up various different references because there are different Morticias with different dresses and different looks. And she doesn't really have any Halloween eyes. She just has her natural eye color. The old TV show version of Morticia, she has sort of a blue or a blue green eye. And then Angelica Houston, who is the absolute goddess who plays the 90s movies version of Morticia has brown eyes. So whatever your natural eye color, I'm sure will be perfect for this. So the next step is when things start getting fun, I'm going to add some bright silver to my immediate eyelid area. So for the lid, I'm dipping into that silver shade Cyborg from Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry. And what I'm going to do is I coat the brush with the color first, and then I wet it with some setting spray. Any setting spray is fine, or even just plain old water, both do the trick just fine. And then after it's wet, I actually go back into the color to collect more before tapping it off. So here's where things start getting fun. I'm not going to do a cut crease, but I'm going to treat this almost as if it's a cut crease. I'm gonna take that shiny metallic silver and cut into the eye right up into the eye socket to give the illusion of me having very large eyes. You may have to keep spraying to keep the brush wet through this process. And for this step, I'm using a packing brush. This one is from MAC. I am not sure, honestly, what the number is because I've had this for over five years and everything has been pretty much rubbed off by now. As for distance, I tend to go about two thirds of the way in to assure that I can blend this properly. Now we're going to add the deepest shade. I'm dipping into the black shade called Noir from Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry and I'm going to blend it into the outer corner only for this step because black can be very difficult to work with because it gets very dark very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and use a card like material. This just happens to be from a fragrance sample and then I'll put it right here where it's sloping just to make sure that I have a cool crisp line and something easy to work off of. For this, I'm using the smaller blending brush, which is the Morphe M506. And because that is such a powerful color, I'm going to go back into the gray shade Slate and blend it out a whole lot more. Now I'm going to blend that into the lower lash line. I'm taking a flat brush, which is the Sigma Flat Definer E15, and I'm going to put it right underneath. I'm just going in with that black shade on the flat brush from the outer corner to the middle of the bottom part of the eyelid. Now I'm going to wipe off the small fluffy brush, go back in with the gray color slate, and blend that a little bit more. This next step is optional, but I am going in with a black liquid liner. This one I love and cherish so much. This liner is available at CVS and it's very inexpensive. It's called the Joa Beauty I'm So Fly Liner in the color black, of course. This one has a brush tip, which I absolutely love, but it is pointed and precise as well. Now, although that step is definitely optional, I like to really use that to blend in that harsh line that I've created with the black shadow, as well as create a base point for my false lashes, which I'm about to apply. The lashes I'm going to use today are by Coco Lashes and they're in the style Tees. So what I'm going to do today is a process that I always do because lash glue always takes a moment to become tacky. What I'm going to do is go ahead and put a strip of it on the pan first. Sorry, this duo is old. There we go. A strip of the glue on the pan first, which I'm going to use to dip my lashes into. But in order to wait for that to get tacky enough to use, I'm going to do a couple other things first. First thing is because I have light colored lashes, the darker my eye makeup is, the lighter my lashes look. So I'm going to go in with a layer of mascara first to ensure that they blend in well. This one is the Butter London Double Decker Lashes Mascara. And I'm going to 
go ahead and do my eyebrows as well. I'm using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the color black. So Angelica Houston has these beautiful high arched eyebrows, which mine are a little bit closer to my eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and overdraw on top in order to replicate that look a little bit. Now that it's been a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and put my false lashes on. The glue should be tacky by now, so what I usually do is I go ahead and dip the lashes into it to create a natural line of glue. Hey, my children. Now, although I use a white lash glue, it does dry down clear within a few minutes. Now it's time to do the rest of the face. I'm really excited always when I get to this part because the hard part, although the most rewarding part of doing the eyes, is now pretty much over. So because I definitely got some fallout on my face from the eyeshadow, I'm gonna take a fluffy powder brush from EcoTools to wipe it right off. Oh, and of course I forgot to highlight the inner corner of my eyes, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. So I'll use a pencil brush. I'm not sure which one this is. It's probably from Morphe. And I'm gonna dip into the shade Pearl from the Sultry palette. This one is a really, really light pink, but because it's so light, it blends in really, really well to the inner corner. This is another optional step, and I don't always do this because my eyes are extremely sensitive, but I am going to line my waterline with a dark color. I would recommend for a Morticia look something like a black, a deep gray, or a silver, but I'm gonna go in with actually a really, really deep purple shade. This eye pencil is from Sephora. It's a deep purple shade, and it's called Tango Night. I'm taking that same flat shader brush also that we used earlier just to blend it in with my lower lash line. Now that that's on, you can really see this coming together and I'm already really excited about it. I ended up looking at a lot of reference material for Morticia and she definitely doesn't have a white face or a white goth face, but what she does have is some very powerful highlight. It looks like she does have like a white gray thing going on with her face. So I'm gonna use the white concealer to highlight at the top of my cheekbones, a little bit on my forehead and shin, just to give myself kind of a ghostly look. Again, you don't necessarily have to do this step or you can take a shade that's just slightly lighter than your own to highlight with. So it's weird, this, it wasn't doing this the other day, but the concealer seems to be drying way too fast, so I'm gonna re-wet my beauty blender. This is looking spooky and not in the best way, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna mix that white concealer with my natural concealer a bit to see if we can't get a good blend going on. That was really scary for a moment, but mixing it in with my normal concealer really made it work really well. So if you're gonna wear a dress with a plunging neckline, you might wanna add a little bit of white to your neck just to blend everything in. I'm gonna go just ever so slightly so that it blends. Now my face is looking sufficiently pallid, so I'm gonna go on to the contour. I noticed that in the 90s Adams Family film with Angelica Houston and Raul Julia, they really wanted to pay homage to that whole black and white look that the original show had. So I'm gonna go ahead and contour my face starting with a gray shade instead of the normal beige. So the gray shade that I'm gonna go in is the same one that I used as eyeshadow. It's called Slate. For this, I'm using a ColourPop contour brush. It's called the F13. Now I'm only gonna contour right underneath my cheekbones to carve it out and give it that beautiful Angelica Houston look. I happen to have kind of a round face whereas Angelica has a beautiful chiseled face. Although I'm not going for a full impersonation, I'm going to give the illusion of having these very, very sharp carved out cheekbones. I'm also carving underneath my chin and up here in order to frame the face. I'm also going to contour my nose with the same gray shade. This brush is awesome for contouring noses. It's a great flat definer brush. It's called the Morphe M572. Now for this, I'm making sure to go in with a very light hand because the gray can get very powerful very quickly. 
I do want to blend that out even further, and in order to do that, I'm going in with a normal brown bronzer. This one happens to be the Hoola Bronzer. I find that bronzing this up a bit with a natural shade makes it look a little bit less ghastly while keeping that same drama and that same black and white flavor. Now I definitely want to take some time to blend this in. I'm using the same Eco Tools powder brush that I used before. Now you can choose to add some powder to this look. I've stopped using a lot of powder, but in order to set this, and if you're going to a really fun spooky Halloween event that you might be dancing in and doing a lot of activity, this would be a good step. Again, I'm going in with the Patrick Star and MAC powder. It does look like some of my concealer has come off of my nose, so I'm gonna go ahead and reapply, even though I have powder on it, who cares? And the final step before I put on a wig will be highlighter. Before I put the highlighter on, I'm going to apply a little bit of setting spray to the T-zone of my face so that it really, really pops. This one is the Scandinavia setting spray, but I happen to put it in an all-nighter setting spray bottle by Urban Decay because I feel that the mister on this is amazing, and then the Scandinavia formula, of course, is really classic. Now quickly before that dries, I'm going to go in with a white highlighter. You can use whatever shade works for you. I do recommend a shade or two lighter than your own skin tone. This one happens to be the Becca highlighter in the color Pearl, which is a pure white. And did I say that was the final step? That is certainly not the final step. The icing on the cake will be lipstick. Now Morticia wears a true red lipstick. I like to go a little bit deeper and a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use the Ofra liquid lipstick in the shade Havana Nights. One thing I tend to do after instead of before is line the lips. And this is actually a sample that I got from Bite Beauty, which is amazing. I'm not sure if the style is number 34 or the color is number 34, but it's a beautiful deep berry that I think goes really well with Havana Nights. If you mess up the way I just did, you can go back in with some concealer or the same liquid lipstick color. Now to completely finish off the look, I'm gonna go in with my setting spray and coat my entire face. So normally when I get to this step in a Halloween video, I'll stop and put the wig on independently, but I wanted to kind of demonstrate for you how I put on the wig. Although my wig isn't perfect for Morticia, it happens to have bangs, so I kind of clip them up a bit. I will show you how I put on the wig and show you kind of that last bit of dramatic impact that having a wig really does for your costume. First of all, I'm going to take my hair out of the existing braid and then rebraid it so that I have pigtail braids. So although usually the best thing to do is to part your hair in the center, I go with my natural part, which happens to be a little bit off to the side. So as you just saw, my hair is really thick, so I try to make these braids as tight as possible to save as much space in the wig cap as I can. And then I take all of my hair and secure it into a wig cap. And what I tend to do is I take these little braids and just stuff them into the back where that curvature in the skull naturally is. That ensures that the wig will look natural and not lumpy. So this is the wig I have from Morticia. It's a wig that I got forever ago from Epic Cosplay Wigs. From here, I start from the very front. I take the top middle part of my hairline and match it to where the top middle part of the hairline of the wig is. And then I just pull it down to cover my head from there. Note, I pull the elastic back part as much as I can to cover the wig cap and hairline completely. Because this looks like a hot mess, I'm gonna go ahead and brush it out as well. And this is the part where it really starts to come together. See the difference between me having my natural hair and having a wig? It's really, really cool when you start putting it on and start seeing yourself more into the character and a little less as your normal self. No matter what, I always want to pin a wig in, especially because this wig has bangs and Morticia does not. I will pin it so that the bangs are pinned into the wig as well. And then from there, I do my best to cover the pins, although they might be slightly visible throughout. And now for the final, final step, I'll slip into Morticia gown for the final look. See you then.
And that's the finished makeup look. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I had a blast being Morticia. I'm so happy that I ended up testing this look a few days ago. I had a birthday and a Halloween witch ball on the same day. So I decided that was the day that I was going to test out Morticia. I did a slightly more natural look that day, but today I wanted to go out with the full blown Angelica Houston inspired look. I also have a Patreon link. If you want to support this channel in any way, whether it's my makeup tutorials, my gaming content, reviews, etc. Feel free to visit the page down below. There's absolutely no pressure, but if you did want to support me, the link is right there. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Whether you'd like to wear Morticia for a Halloween, a costume ball, a convention, or just being in your house and being spooky like I'm doing right now, I hope that this will help you get on the right track and get that fabulous smoky look that Angelica Houston absolutely rocked back in the day in the 1990s movie. So what did you think? Feel free to post your comments down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and want to support my further content. So I hope you guys have a wonderful night or day wherever you are. As always, be good to each other and most importantly, happy Halloween. Foundation, I mixed Tarte's Rainforest of the Sea Foundation with the L'Oreal Voluminous Oh my gourd. Right now I'm mixing the Tarte What I use is Tarte's Rainforest of the Sea Foundation mixed with L'Oreal's <laughs> Oh no! For that I'm using Oh I got something in my eyes Oh god Wearing contacts is hard <laughs> In contact. I don't know. I don't have a card. Do I have a card? No. Crap, I need eyeliner. Wait a sec. Oh my gourd. Okay. This one is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade White. Oh. Nah. That has a different shade name. <laughs> Bamboozled. I looked up. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> oh, she's chiseled. Oh, <laughs> she's chiseled. Ah! <laughs> Happy Halloween. Off with her head. What are the neighbors doing?